Hello guys, I'm back. In this video, I will share with you process design and optimization for gas compression stages. I will teach you how to perform pressure rating calculations and how to set a multi-stage compressor on Aspen High Seas. Stay with me up to the end because I will share also comments related to compressor datasheet and compressor PNID. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduates and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design. When we talk about chemical process engineering and plant design, the role of a chemical process engineer is to do the design, sizing, selection and evaluation of the equipment. In greenfield projects, where there is no equipment available, we need to perform the heat and material balance of the process to define the conditions for the new equipment. Brownfield projects where the equipment is already available, we need to perform the evaluation to guarantee that it's possible to operate the machine in the new conditions. For gas compressors, most often we are not involved with the mechanical design of the equipment. We are responsible to define the process conditions for the equipment and based on that, the vendor will perform the design of the machine. But eventually, you can face yourself or you can see yourself involved with the process design and optimization of a multi-stage compressor. For instance, the supplier only sells or only offers the bare machine of the equipment you, and you need with a multidisciplinary team to define the stages of compression. To do that, I will share with you an article from my friend Vijay Sarat from free ebook where you can find and you can learn how to perform the calculations needed to find the best efficiency of the equipment. In his ebook, he proposed a case study where a multi-stage compression system receives 30 million standard cubic feet per day of hydrocarbon with a given inlet pressure and temperature and also the required discharge pressure. The polytrophic efficiency of the first stage of compression is given and you need to perform an optimization study to verify what is the performance of a two-stage and also a three-stage centrifugal compression system. In this video, I will show to you the steps done to evaluate a two-stage compre centrifugal compression system. And with this knowledge, you will be able to do that for the three stages of compression. To be able to do the evaluation, you need to know the gas composition of the stream. It is available on table one, but also how to define the discharge pressure of each stage of compression. And to do that, you need to understand why we have multi-stage of compression. When gas is compressed, the temperature of the fluid increases and that can lead to a hazard condition. For instance, for flammable gases, they have an auto-ignition temperature that we want to avoid. Other fluids can start a polymerization or have a temperature of degradation. And when we are talking about compressors with lubrificants, the high temperature can lead to the combustion of the lubrificant. So based on that, we limit the maximum temperature that a fluid can achieve in a stage of compression. And we do that defining the maximum compression ratio of each stage. On table 6-6 -6 of the Rules of Thumb for Chemical Engineers book, you can find typical maximum single stage pressure rates of compressors that depends on the kind of compressors that we are talking to. For instance, for reciprocating compressors, if it's lubricated or non-lubricated, usually the maximum single stage pressure ratio is 3 to 1. So it means that the pressure that goes in the inlet of the compressor can be multiplied three times for the discharge of the compressor. When we talk about screw compressors, oil fluid can be as high as 50 to 1. 
and it is possible because the oil will be responsible for removing the heat of compression. In another, in another way, the oil free can reach from 4 to 1 to 7 to 1 pressure ratio. And when we're talking about centrifugal compressors, that is the casing that we are talking to in this video, we can get 1.5 to 1 to 3 to 1 single stage pressure ratio. This is typical values, but not necessary is the mandatory values. So what matters most is the temperature that is reached in the equipment. So in practice, the discharge pressure of a compressor is limited to 150 to 160 Celsius degree. And we want to have a safe margin to these values, around 20 to 25 Celsius degree. So basically, most often you will find the discharge of your compressor in the range of 120 to 125 Celsius degree. Unless that your fluid is, cannot reach this temperature. So every time that you start a new project, it's very important that you get the material safety data sheet of your fluid because there you will have the references about the hazards related to your components. Based on that, there are some ways to achieve the required conditions in terms of temperature and one of them is to limit or to work on the compression ratio of your equipment because as much the compression ratio increases, as higher will be the discharge temperature. Another thing that can be done is to cool down the inlet temperature of your fluid because for the same ratio, if, your, if the temperature of your fluid is lower, lower will be the discharge temperature of your fluid. A uh, issue with that is that if you are dealing with condensable fluids or condensable components, you don't want to achieve a very low temperature because if you do that, eventually you will condense components that you don't want to be condensed. You can increase also the stages of compression, but in practice, what you do is try to achieve the less stage of compression as possible because each time that you add a stage of compression, you are adding more materials for your system or for your equipment. And you want to avoid that because that increases the cost of the equipment. So once we have all the inlet conditions informed, what we need to first to define the discharge pressure of each stage of compression is to do the calculation of the compression ratio of the system and how to do the, the calculation of the compression ratio of the system. To do the calculation of the pressure ratio of the system, you need to know the charge pressure of your equipment and also the inlet pressure of your equipment. And here I will differentiate two pressure ratio. The first one is the global pressure ratio that is calculated based on the discharge pressure of your final stage. So if you have five stages of compression, you will get the discharge pressure of the stage five and you will divide that by the inlet pressure of the stage one. So you will get the inlet condition of your compressor, you will get the discharge condition of your compressor, and you will divide the pressure at the last stage by the pressure of the first stage. And both pressures must be in absolute pressure. So it can be PSIA with PSIA, it can be Barre with Barre, what is important here is that both of them are on absolute pressure. And the absolute pressure, just to remind you, is the summing up of manometric pressure plus the barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is a function of the elevation of your site. 
as much as elevated it is, lower will be the barometric pressure. On the other hand, the manometric pressure is the pressure that you read most often in the manometer or in the pressure transmitter of your system. It is a, differ a difference between the absolute pressure minus the barometric pressure. Once you calculated the global pressure ratio to find the interstage pressure ratio, you need to apply the equation where the global pressure ratio powered by the 1 divided by the number of stages will give you the interstage pressure ratio. With this result, you are able to define the discharge pressure of each stage. For instance, you will get the pressure at the suction to the pressure inlet multiplied by the pressure ratio will give you to you the discharge pressure of the first stage. You will get the discharge pressure of the first stage multiplied by the pressure ratio you will get the discharge pressure of the second stage. To exemplify that, we can see the calculations performed in the article. In the ebooks case study, we have a pressure discharge condition of 15 bar A and a inlet condition of 2 bar A. So the global pressure ratio is 15 divided by 2, that gives to us 7.5 and it is dimensionless. And because we have two stages of compression evaluation in this case, we'll, we'll get the results and do the root square of this number. That will lead to 2.7386. So, find the discharge pressure of the first stage of compression, we will get the inlet condition as 2 bar A multiplied by the 2.7386 and that will lead to 5.48 bar A at the discharge of the first stage of compression. Important to mention that the vendors or manufacturers do the calculation of the pressure ratio based on the nozzle conditions of the equipment. So they will get the discharge pressure at the discharge nozzle and the inlet pressure at the inlet nozzle. So when we are doing the specification of your compressor, most often what we specify is the suction pressure before the isolation valve or at the battery limits of the equipment and we ask for the discharge pressure at the battery limits of the equipment. And that is very, very important because between the battery limit here in this case and the discharge nozzle of the equipment, we have an air cooler, we have a discharge block valve and that will add pressure drop to your system. In this case, if you want to have 15 bar A at the battery limit of the equipment, the pressure at the discharge of the equipment must be higher because the a higher pressure less the pressure drop will give the 15 bar A at the battery limit of the system. Be aware of that when you are dealing with the process data sheet of your equipment. I will return to this topic when I cover a piping instrumentation diagram and also data sheet of a real centrifugal compressor. Different than Aspen Plus in Aspen High Seas, it's not possible to simulate a multi-stage compressor with just one block. So in this case, as many stages of compression you have in your compressor, you need to add the block for the compressor in your process simulation in Aspen High Seas. So in this case, if we have a one stage compressor, just one block is needed. When we need a two stage compressor, we need to add another block for a three stage of compression, another block and so on, until you get all the stages of compression that you need. The main issue here, that every time you compress 
the fluid in a high pressure ratio, the temperature increases so to not damage the suction of the next stage of compression. Most often, we add a kind, some kind of cooling. It can be a air cooler, it can be a shell into the heat exchanger. But for the simulation of the compressor, multi-stage compressor, at the first site, the, for preliminary calculations, instead of adding heat exchangers like sharing tube or air cooler, you can just add a cooler. A cooler will do the calculation for the heat dirty needed to do the cooling of the medium. Another thing to consider is that when you are doing the cooling of the compressed gas, eventually you can have the formation of condensate. If that is the case, you need to add also a separator to guarantee that to the next stage of compression, you will not have condensate. If Eisenheim sees verify that there are condensate at the suction of the compressor, a warning will be added or will be informed to you. So the basic set to do the simulation of a multi-stage compre compressor in Aspen High Seas is material streams. You need to inform the inlet material streams and also the outlet material streams and also the energy of the compressor. Besides that, you need to inform all the adiabatic efficiency for the polymer polytropic efficiency. As a standard, the Eisenheim has 75% of adiabatic efficiency. It's possible to define which kind of compressor is being considered, centrifugal, reciprocating, wet gas, or screw, and you need to inform the discharge conditions in terms of delta P, pressure ratio, or just the discharge pressure. Taking into consideration the gas composition and conditions uh, related to the VJ's article, we have a 2 bar A inlet stream with 30 million standard cubic feet per day and 30 Celsius degree at the inlet conditions of the compressor. And the discharge conditions for the system is 15 bar A. If we just add the 15 bar A at the start of the stream or in the stream one that represents the charge condition, we verify that the temperature of the fluid will be around 170 Celsius degree. That is above of the discharge temperature recommended in most of the cases. So to avoid this kind of situation, what we need to do is to split the ratio of compression in multiple segments. So based on that, that's why we need, for this case, for instance, two stages of compression. So to do that, you just need to add the connections for the next stage and define the correct pressure ratio for each stage of compression. If condensate are not formed based on the process conditions, it can be removed from your process simulation. You don't, don't need to add that if based on the process conditions, you will not have condensate in your process. So with this, to represent the true stage compression described in the article, the process simulation will, will seem like this one. And just to clarify, the after cooler is needed depending on what will happen in the with the stream that you are working on. In this case, you can see that the discharge of the second stage of compression is 123 Celsius degree. If for any reason you need a hot stream downstream of the discharge of the compressor, you will not add an after cooler. But most often, the process needs to comply with the design temperature, and because of that, for this purpose, it was added an after cooler.
the feature exchangers between pages of compressors are known as intercooler and the heat exchanger at the discharge of the last page of compressor is known as aftercooler. So before the optimization, when you build your multi-stage compressor in your process simulation, the results must look like this one. We have 30 million standard cubic feet per day entering your compressor at 2 bar A and 30 Celsius degree. The efficiency, polytrophic efficiency in this case is 82%. You will add the equal pressure ratio and you will define the 5.48 bar A as discharge pressure that will lead to a discharge temperature of 94.5 Celsius degree. You need to add 0.1 pressure drop in air cooler and based on that you will have another suction pressure to your compressor and you need to add the pressure ratio to reach the 15 bar A. And you have another pressure drop here in the air cooler so at the discharge block valve you will have in fact 14.9 bar A. That will lead, in terms of calculations, to a total power of 3,000 kilowatts and a total cooler duty of 2,786 kilowatts. If you are able to perform the pressure rate calculation and add to each stage of your compressor, most often your job is done. If you consult some literature, you will verify that the author suggests you that the best efficiency is reached when you have equal pressure ratio for each stage of compression. But in the VJ's article, they argue that it's possible to achieve a better performance in terms of energy if instead of having the same pressure ratio for each stage, you will do a case analysis to verify what are the best pressure ratio for each stage of compression. So based on that, now let's go to the Aspen High Seas to verify some results to understand how it's possible to achieve that. So we are in the Aspen High Seas and here basically we have the same results that Vijay Sarat presents in his article. If we go to the spreadsheet, you can verify that I have here the global pressure ratio and that is very similar to the first stage pressure ratio, the same. And the second, second stage is a little bit different because the pressure drop of the system, because of the air cooler pressure drop. I decide to keep as it is because the differences is very small and will not interfere in the results. Based on that, we have the power calculation or the duty calculation for each stage of compression that leads to 3000 kilowatts. And we have also the heat duty of each stage of compression, compression that leads to 2787 kilowatts. This is the result if we only do the calculation of the pressure rate and apply for the equipment. But if I do a case study varying the discharge pressure of the first stage, I will change the pressure ratio of the first stage. And as my discharge, my discharge pressure is uh, also set, I will also change the pressure ratio of the second stage of compression. And what VJ says is that there is a combination of pressure ratio for the first stage plus the second stage where the energy of the system is lower than if I use the same pressure ratio for both in this configuration. So based on that, what you need to do? You need to build a case study. In this case study, you will add as your independent variable. It's the variable that will be adjusted during the verification. The first stage discharge pressure and as 
dependent variable or the variables that I want to verify the results, I added the first stage pressure ratio, second stage pressure ratio, the compressor dirty, total co compressor dirty, and also the total cooling dirty. So, defining these setups, I can go to case study and I can choose the type of case study that I want to. In this case, I will use the nested. If you want to know more about the types of case studies available on Aspen High Seas, you can take a look in the video that will be highlighted in some place on this video or in the description of this video. So, to do the evaluation, I started my discharge pressure of the first stage of compression at 4.5 bar and it will end at 12.5 bar. These are arbitrary values. You can choose any other range and I add a step size of 0.15. This is from this point here, you are free to choose any kind of adjustment. What matters here is that when you go to results and plot, if I plot the discharge pressure by the energy consumption, you will verify that the power consumption of the system lowers when I change the discharge pressure of my first stage of compression. So, based on that, instead of choosing a specific pressure ratio, I can verify what is the new pressure ratio where I have the lowest power consumption. Working with the plots is a little bit tough, but as I know that my first stage discharge pressure is 80 bar has the lowest power consumption, I can verify what should be the pressure ratio for the first stage of compression. So here, if I cross the, the, the values, I can find that to reach the minimum power consumption, I must have a pressure ratio of 4 in my first stage of compression. And that will lead another value for the second stage of compression. So I need to do the cross also and I will have a pair of values that will comply with the requirements of the system 2 bar G, 2 bar at the inlet and 15 bar at the outlet and with the lowest power consumption. Another way to, to see that is going to results. I have a table here of numbers and you can export the values to the Excel or you can highlight it and do a control copy or a control C command in your Windows, for instance. What we can get from this pressure rate evaluation graph? We can see that we have here a curve for the first stage pressure ratio and also for the second stage pressure ratio. And when they meet each other is related to the pressure ratio for the standard calculation. So here we have 2.7 pressure ratio or around that for each stage of compression. But the, the power consumption in case is represented by the blue bar. So here you can see that we have 3000 kilowatts. But as I run or as I walk with my pressure ratio, I am able to reach lowest power consumption. So around 4 here, I have the lowest power consumption. So in the left side, I have kilowatts units of measurement. And at the right side, I have the pressure ratio units of measurement. So here, if I go to 4, and cross with my blue bar, I get the lowest power consumption that gives, gives around 2,950 kilowatts. So, based on that, I have also the information of the heat dirty. So, I can see here that for this point, I have the uh, lowest 
power consumption in terms of heat also. So it means that instead of choosing the same pressure ratio for both stage of compressions, in terms of energy makes much more sense to have a differentiation between them. And here in the calculations, we can see, see the savings. So I did the calculation to quantify how much is the saving in terms of power. Power for compressor running and also power for the cooling. Now that you have these numbers, you need to know how much is the cost of the electricity in your region. And with that, you do the verifications to quantify in terms of money how much it's possible to save to your company. As much costly is the power of your region, more beneficial will be to have this kind of arrangement. If the power is very cheap, eventually do not make sense to have this kind of arrangement. When I add the optimized case to my process simulation, you can verify that in terms of discharge, discharge temperature, I am within the limit. So in the standard case, I have around 90, 94 Celsius degree. The discharge pressure is 122 or 23 Celsius degree. And for the optimized case, I increase the temperature by first stage compressor to 120 Celsius degree. And I decrease the temperature in the discharge of the second stage of compression, but all of these, these temperatures are in a safe range. To finish this video, what are the centrifugal compressor documentation that the chemical processing engineer will deal with during plan design? Talking about centrifugal compressors, the process engineer will deal with a variation of documentations, for instance, the vendor's manual, the list of alarms and shutdowns. But one of the most important documentations to be evaluated in the phase of purchase of the equipment is the performance curve or the data sheet of the compressor and also the PNID. Here in the screen, you can see an example of a data sheet of a centrifugal compressor. The interface or the layout of each data sheet will depend on the supplier. In this case, we have the inlet conditions and also the operating point. The inlet conditions is informed by the chemical process engineer in the process data sheet of the equipment. As I mentioned to you, we, we develop the heating material balance, transfer the results or the results that interest for the equipment to a process data sheet and other disciplines add information to a specification data sheet in order that we can do the quotation of the equipment and eventually the purchase of the equipment. So besides the information of the RPM of the compressor, the orders information here is the information added by the process engineer. The gas composition, in this case is air, the ambient pressure or the barometric pressure, the inlet pressure, the inlet temperature and the inlet or the coolant temperature available for this machine. On the other hand, the operate point, some information here is informed by the process engineer. For instance, the Desired pressure at the outlet is the information from the process engineer. The flow of fluids in this equipment is also information added by the process engineer. But the power calculated in this case is responsibility of the vendor because it depends on the efficiency of the machine that is a responsibility of the vendor. The specific power is by vendor. The rise to Surge is by vendor and the turn it down is by vendor also, and the ratio to max flow is also by vendor. And here, most similar to a centrifugal pump, we have here the compressor curve. So I have the 
search curve here where I cannot operate above this range because I will have I will be in the search conditions. And for each line here, I have a condition of opening for my guide vein. So the guide vein is responsible to add more or less flow to my equipment. The guide vein will add a pressure drop to the equipment in order that I can choose the range of operations. And in the operating point at the 10,930 normal cubic meters per hour, I have a guide vein opening of 49.7. So this is my operating range. And based on that, I reach the desired discharge pressure. If I want to have a lower flow in my equipment, I will change the guide vein opening, for instance, for 60, and I will operate at this range here, and I can verify what are the new conditions in terms of performance. So here, based on the opening of the guide vein and of the flow of the fluids in the equipment, I have a requirement of power. Moreover, in this data sheet, I can see the conditions of my equipment. So here, there are some information. As I told you, it is a two-stage centrifugal compressor, so I have stage one and stage two, and here I have the information of pressure and also the pressure rating for each stage. And you can see that in this case, the pressure rating is very, very similar. So it means that the vendor decided to do a mechanical design based on the constant or in the same pressure ratio for both stages. And the differences between them most often will be because the pressure drop of the intercooler. So I have the conditions pressure inlet, outlet, and what is important to us when we are dealing with the process simulation for the performance of the heating material balance is that we need to have the reference of efficiency of the equipment. Here, the supplier informs the isentropic efficiency. This is the adiabatic efficiency shown or find, found in the Aspen High Seas. We have the polytropic efficiency, and we have also the isothermal efficiency. Verify that the polytropic efficiency is higher than the isentropic efficiency. And these efficiency are based on the operating conditions of the machine. And as for reference, we have here a efficiency of the machine based on a air test. So this is the reference. This is the real value for this case. Moreover, we have information of the motors. So for each stage, we have a requirement of power and other information related to electrical engineering and if we go below we have here some information related to the cooling media moreover we have the information of the total hp needed for this equipment and with that there are the performance curve in terms of each stage of compression so here we are dividing the curves of performance for each stage of compression. Another document that the chemical process engineer must deal with when uh, purchasing an equipment is the piping implementation diagram of the equipment. Observe that for this diagram here, the EQ dash line represents the battery limits of the supplier. So everything that's inside the EQ is responsibility of the supplier and will be sent by the supplier and what is outside of the EQ dash line is responsibility of the engineering company or the PC company or eventually from the customer. And here you can see that the process engineer 
in the specification data sheet for a quotation will inform the net conditions at the battery limit of the equipment and the required pressure discharge at the battery limit of the equipment. As I told you, to do the calculations for the pressure rating or pressure ratio of the compressor, most often the suppliers uses the nozzles information. And that do not matter for us if I am buying a package. So I am not too worried about how much is pressure at the nozzle discharge. It is more important to me in terms of purchasing to know the pressure at the fence of the equipment. Of course, that during evaluation, during the operations of the equipment, when you do the calculations for evaluation of performance, you will get into consideration what is available to you in terms of temperature, in terms of pressure, because you need that to do the performance of the equipment. And here, why I have dash line going outside of the boundaries or the battery limits of the equipment. I have this because, for instance, this TE represents the temperature element for the temperature measurement. And also it's like a transmitter. So the signal transmitted by this element will go to my PLC. So this square with a cir circle here and a dash line here represents that this information will go to my supervisory. But before going to the supervisory, I need to add the cables to connect the cables to my PLC. So the communication between the TE and the supervisory is based on the PLC arrangement. In my control system, I will have also, in some cases, Besides the information of temperature here, I will have a alarm for high temperature and I will have a signal or a set point for shutdown temperature. So the TSHH is a switch for the shutdown of the compressor and I will associate that with an alarm. The same for the alarm for the high temperature. So I have a switch for high temperature that will lead to the alarm of high temperature. Observe that in this case, I don't have a vessel separator to collect the condensate of the process. I don't have for two reasons. In the operating conditions of this equipment, I do not expect to have a lot of liquid condensating or remove, removal of condensate from my air. So what I did here also, what was done here is, is passed through the air at the shell side of the heat exchanger and consider the uh, boots or a removal of condensate at the shell side of the heat exchanger. I am able to do that because the amount of condensate to be removed is not too much, so I will not increase too much my heat exchanger. Basically, what I want here is to cool down the, the air in not, just enough to enter the second stage of compression. And that's why I have here a temperature with a shutdown condition because if for any reason I lose my coolant, this temperature will increase a lot and to not damage, not damage the second stage of compression, I will shut down the machine. So when I stop the compression as a whole, I will decrease the temperature because now I don't have any more compression, any other compression. So, this kind of evaluation is also the tasks of a chemical process engineer. Some alarms and shutdowns will be suggested by the vendor. Others will be added by the chemical process engineer. A HAZOP meeting most often also helps to evaluate the hazard conditions, the operability conditions of the system. So in this video, I have shared with you how to do the pressure rating calculation of a centrifugal compressor 
and also based on the Vijay Sarat's article in his free ebook, you will find that it's possible to choose different pressure ratios to get a lower power consumption of your machine. Moreover, we have seen a real data sheet for a, compre a centrifugal compressor and also a real pipe instrumentation diagram for a two-stage centrifugal compressor. Before I go, if you want to download the free ebook from UG Sarait, you just need to go to jeffersoncosta.com and there you just need to add your best mail and type the country where you live and click on instant access that you will receive the link to download for free the Vijay Sarat ebook. Let me know in the comments which chapter or which model of the Vijay Sarat ebook you would like me to review in my YouTube channel. That's it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.